I'm Scott Appel, your guide to the weird and wonderful world of The Prisoner here on Channel 54. In tonight's episode, The Schizoid Man, the prisoner's very sense of identity is threatened when he is confronted with himself. The idea of an identical duplicate claiming to be oneself is a clever gimmick to be sure, but it's one best suited perhaps to B-movies or paperback spy thrillers. We've come to expect more from this series, and we get it. The clever manner in which identities are shuffled gives this old idea a new and brilliant twist. Schizoid Man, which was directed by McGowan, is full of quotable lines and includes many interesting tidbits about the prisoner's past. Pay particular attention to the manner in which McGowan expresses emotions through his hand gestures, probably a remnant of his days on the stage. I'll be back after tonight's episode to share some ideas about why this is so important in episodes. And I'll have a surprise guest here to talk with us as well, so be sure to stay tuned. But now, let's all double our pleasure and double our fun by seeing two prisoners instead of just one in The Schizoid Man. The French poet and filmmaker Jean Cocteau once said, mirrors would do well to reflect a little more before sending back images. This is certainly the case in The Schizoid Man. The village's reflection, as usual, was somewhat warped. This episode leads us to ask a very important question. Just what is identity? Being of two minds about the subject, I've invited an expert in village psychology here to debate this question. Welcome, please, number 108. 108, thank you for coming. My pleasure, 54. Uh, 108, I'm sure our viewers would like to know how you define identity. Identity is appearance. Plastic surgery can alter appearance without changing the individual. If appearance is identity, you wouldn't catch me dead in this outfit. Identity is the social roles we play, but social roles are merely name tags to show what function we're fulfilling at a given moment. Top psychologists agree that identity is nothing more than behavior, and Pavlov and Skinner have proven that behavior can be altered through conditioning. Well, in lower animals, perhaps, but not if the subject is aware of what's happening. The trouble with science is it can be perverted. Well then, Mr. B.S. in psychology, what is identity? I can't give you a definitive answer, but this episode gave us a good clue when the Haitian controller said to number two, in Haiti we'd say he's stolen his soul. The soul? Metaphysical hogwash. Show me a soul. Well, I'll do better than that. I'll show you where you'd be without one. Be seeing you. I'm melting! Melting! <laughs> Well, at least that debate wasn't a split decision. But now, on to some matters of singular importance. We've been mentioning quite often the fact that we've reordered the 17 episodes of The Prisoner in the hopes that the development of the themes would become clearer. And over the past few weeks, I've attempted to explain why we've placed a particular episode in a new position. But with the airing of Schizoid Man, we can now talk about the reordering in a somewhat larger sense. In our new arrangement, the series takes on the appearance of a three-act play. The first six episodes comprised Act One of this play. For the most part, Act One concerned the efforts of the village to disorient the prisoner, balanced by his constant efforts to escape. With Schizoid Man, however, we move into Act Two, which encompasses the middle six episodes. And what are the characteristics of Act Two? Three things, we believe. The first is a subtle transition on the part of the prisoner. He has finally, after repeated attempts, discovered just how difficult escape from the village really is. In future episodes, we'll see his escape attempts dwindle as he is drawn more and more into the society of the village and its affairs. But all is not lost, nor has he given up hope. The second theme of Act Two is made clear in Schizoid Man. The prisoner wins. Here he scores his very first victory over the disorienting forces of the village. His defeats are pretty much behind him now as he begins to catch on to the rules of life in the village and pits his wits against those rules and the rulers. But his victories are, at best, Pyrrhic victories, costly and hard won. These central six episodes comprise a sort of cat-and-mouse game in which each side scores some points, but neither side emerges as a clear victor. 
The third hallmark of Act Two is the village's reaction to these little victories on the part of the prisoner. In many of the previous shows, the various number twos claim that they don't want the prisoner broken. They want him won over. However, their early efforts to disorient him have all basically failed. They've succeeded in demoralizing him, but not in reprogramming him. And with the prisoner's increasing mastery of the rules of the game, comes his capture's escalation of that game. Both sides are more resolute than ever now. The prisoner is determined to preserve his individuality in his mind, and the village rulers are willing to risk affecting his mind in order to transform him into one of their own. Schizoid Man is a very fitting opening scene for Act Two, as it concerns an attempt to undermine the prisoner's very strong sense of identity, and shows that the village is willing to risk physically tampering with our hero to ensnare his mind. In the course of the next five episodes, we'll see various number twos use a multitude of drugs and electronic devices to shake our hero's most valuable asset, his knowledge of who he is. And one last thing. We've received a number of letters from viewers voicing their opinions about The Prisoner. And if you have some insights you'd like to share, write me in care of The Prisoner, KTEH-TV, Channel 54, 100 Skyport Drive, San Jose, California, 95115. Next week, we'll get a crash course in education as the prisoner meets the mysterious general and attempts to prove that knowledge is not necessarily wisdom. Until then, I'm Scott Appel, number 54.